Hello, everyone. Guess what I got? Your uh, house. Days ago. Your house. Yes, the my Xbox house. Series. Oh, oh, a Switch. A Series S. <laughs> you got a Switch. Ago, <laughs> the boombox. Okay, Dwes, uh, can I ask? I got an Xbox Series S. All right, that case, maybe you can answer me that question. What exactly is that? Uh, what exactly is that big black circle with the? Wall? Is, is, is that supposed to be the place where the sound comes comes, or, or is it no, just? It's, a... the, it's, it's the fan. Really? Yeah, you, the you, ventilation system. It really needs yeah. to have a, a hole that big. Well, the PlayStation Five's got a big fan as well. So. True, but but the, but it, but it has an exhaustion system on the back. I mean, weird. It's more just. The... I've, well, to be fair, I think the fans are about the same size. It's just that the Xbox Series X chooses, to, you know, to um, uh, accentuate the Leading presence of the, the crowd. Well, well, based on what I saw oh, from that, the it's, yeah. a, it's an achievement. Of so basically, I can already tell that Microsoft is using the exact same UI on the from the Xbox One. I'm not kidding. This is literally the exact same UI on the Xbox One right well, now. I guess it makes it makes easier for you know returning players. Uh, oh sure. The bone. Uh, the, the, the issue, the, the issue, the, the problem, Teo, is that as Bob Nicholas SMB pointed out, there's some issues with this UI because he, you know how the smart delivery works, for example, with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, you put in the disc, and the game just gets 600 megas or so from the disc, and then downloads 40 something gigabytes from the internet. The game doesn't actually install the game from the disc onto your hard drive; it downloads the entire game from the internet. So oh. have fun, have fun with that. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just giving you guys a guided tour of the user interface and some other parts as well. So is... Overall, I think it's it's simple enough to follow on the menus themselves. It's just getting to them can be a bit of a it can be really clunky, a, a bit of a journey. <laughs> so is all the news about the supposed issues with the Xbox Series X true? You know, in typical, oh, don't buy a console at launch fashion, or are those more so just fabricated videos of them smoking? Uh, I uh, don't yeah. know what you're specifically talking about, Drova. Well, um, actually, carry on. I'm going to find something real quick. Basically, so, yeah, there's been I'm supposedly... A file oh, size. Uh... Basically, too, there's been a lot of videos of Xbox Series X's apparently going up in smoke. Oh, however, that's a... However, this, it's, however, it was this, a fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also what I've heard. Um, also, Angry Joe sort of sorry. brought attention to this tweet that showed how an Xbox Series X supposedly going up in smoke or exploding can be faked. Yeah, not just that. Uh, I mean, it's pretty common for consoles at launch to overheat, so... I don't uh, mean uh, when you buy it fresh new, but uh, the ones produced around the launch window, because, you know, they're still testing how we properly work. So oh, it's pretty that, obvious that the initial audience function is a guinea pig on that. I actually oh, have... I, just, uh... oh, I get that. Oh. I get that, but going up in smoke the way some videos were, that seemed a Oh, no, no, that, no, we already know that was fake, Jova. That was just people on Twitter. Um, uh, uh, people on Twitter. Jova, if I may, you just reminded me. Here's a lovely little tweet from Xbox's official account. Oh, no. We can't believe we have to say this. Please do not blow vape smoke into your Xbox Series X. <laughs> and yeah, here's one cool thing about the... Uh, thing. So that's what's been going on. Here's one cool thing Pretty about the nice. series test that I think the PS5 is having as well. You can set it so that games with subtitles will have them on by default. Nice. So you have to keep going in the, so you have to, so when you start up a game, you have to keep going to the menu, uh, going oh, off. That's on. a nice little option. If I can give the Xbox Series X, it seems like it's a much better piece of hardware going into launch than the Xbox One was. For, well, both uh, it makes sense, Java, considering they, here they didn't have to rush to rearrange the console to meet the, the launch line after they realized, oh shit, the thing we were banking on turned out to not you know, resonate <laughs> well with the audience. Yeah, that too. But yeah, everything seems to be in order here. Hey, Banjo. Uh, now let's have a look at the games I've got so far, but mm, I think I've got some duplicates here for some reason. Better, better sort that out pretty quickly. Yeah, I haven't got too many games, mainly because the uh, drive for the uh, Xbox uh, Series S is a bit small. It's a bit small by yes. modern gaming console standards. Not, not, 
not to mention the uh, not to mention those. But have you seen the price of those expansion cards? Christ! <laughs> if I ever the console itself. If I ever got an Xbox Series X, I'll probably get the normal version because I prefer getting my games physical. Since the the only reason, uh, the only uh, thing so far that I'm interested in for this Series S is for potentially more backwards compatible stuff with the original Xbox, so so we can finally maybe play Jet Set Radio Future on a more modern console. And considering it's the company that owns it, won't give it to us. Um, <laughs> well, we're, we're, well, not necessarily for the same game, but there was a step forward. Basically, now Sonic Unleashed actually runs it. Yeah, again, yeah, that, that, that's the sad part too. Yeah. I have to allow Microsoft to to, to get sorry, this from Sega. Sorry, that's the problem. Sorry, Jonathan, Hold on. You get these uh, little quests that you can do to earn more points, so that you can use them in the Microsoft Store to potentially get some um, little. Well, if the gifts. Oh, like, yes. Uh, Welcome to card. our early play for a Final Fantasy IX. Well, all yeah, the games on Game Pass who chose these. So. I'm just doing, I'm just doing, I'm just running this to uh, test and see how the video looks. I don't know, Tails. I don't know, Tails. Still a better pick than most of the first party stuff on Game Pass, if you ask me. At least it would be, you know, first party stuff. Here's a game that was mostly famous on the PlayStation. Well, I'm, I'm, that's I went, I went pretty much everywhere is. now. You could have picked, uh, you, Ed Webbs, you could have picked Quantum Break. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> I would, no, I'd rather play Bubsy, I'd rather play Bubsy 3D, well, well, well muted, obviously. Really? Break. Wow. <sighs> well, okay, to Webbs' credit, this is a good game. That, yeah. that enough is warrant enough. You know, maybe I, you know, now that I think about it, maybe I could record Astro's Playroom, uh, just because uh, that game is also uh, getting awesome uh, impressions from people, even though it's embedded in the console itself. It's a, it's more than just a tech demo; it's actually a full-blown game. So. Ugh. Also, yes, I'm in the UK. Yeah, yeah you, you, you can set the you can set the uh, text in the game to you know either US or UK or other languages actually, which is cool. Well, I'm not here to do that right now. So. I will give Microsoft credit this, though. They're actually giving more reason to, you know, do achievements by getting points for them. All right, now let's have a look through the current uh, library of Xbox Game Pass games. See what the uh, lineup is like. At this Again, series. one major future was that EA partnered, so that EA Play was free of charge included with Game Pass, which is actually kind of a bubble. It makes sense for people who love multiplayer because most EA games nowadays mostly run for multiplayer purposes. So, and considering the one of the core ideas of getting an Xbox was for the multiplayer. Uh, for some multiplayer shooters, uh, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. Uh, uh, to teaming up, a couple of a couple of original Xbox games. Oh, Battletoads! I'm going to install that. Oh, goody! I play it later. I haven't actually played it yet, so I don't know how it is. Well, I'm I'm bleeding edge. Uh, I'll, I'm, I'll I'll just say this, Pedro. I'm very 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 mixed on it well uh i'm actually gonna planning on aside from recording the gears 5 dlc this december i was thinking of maybe recording that as well so sure for... why not i mean it's, so, it, 19. it's a short game anyway so might as well crackdown oh look crack oh look crackdown free yeah, yeah they... <laughs> oh well, the ace still remembers we had Dante's inferno oh boy oh disneyland the Connect Adventures game. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. I actually, Jova, um, I looked, um, I actually asked about this, Jova, from the crowd that I'm familiar with. Uh, uh, they remade the game for uh, without the Connect. Uh, the really? Basis. Yes. Actually, that, that's, a good, that's a good question. Does the, the seri are the Series X and S compatible with the Kinect? Uh, yes, the X, well, well, okay. The, you mean the Xbox One Kinect? Mm, I, well, do I, 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 I doubt I, I, it, I Till. Get, we'll get this one, but the file size is too big, so... Uh, I, I doubt it, Till, because the first one of the first things Phil Spencer did when he took over... Oh, Kingdom uh, Hearts. One of the first things that Phil Spencer did when he took over Xbox was get rid of the Kinect. So, and this console was produced under his tenure. So most likely, no, no Kinect. Kinect is dead. You know what? You know what? 
to be fair to Phil Spencer, that may be one of his best decisions. Oh, Do no. not get me wrong. Yes. The Connect was great but, for Come Dan on, I, w- I want to see Wiggle in trying to play, you know, Rank or Rampage oh, in Star Wars Connect. Oh, oh. gigabytes. I wonder if Quantum yeah. Break actually runs like 60 FPS That's because on the, the Series S. The reason, it's that, the reason it's that big is because, remember, it has 4K... Uh, TV episodes in them, so they're really, right. really big in size. That's sure, sure. Believe it or not, inside Quantum Break lies a failed TV series. Yep. So enjoy downloading that all in there. Oh, okay, sup- uh, Super Lucky's Tale. Tales of Asperia. Definitive edition. That's neat. Um, yeah. but uh, yeah, I have There's to say, it's a gigabyte. So, uh, oh, yeah, this, this is the one to the left. Sword Art Online. Uh, you get it away. Oosh. Why? <laughs> Shush. Everyone's favorite. So, exactly. Pedro. So, Pedro, did they like remake every Connect compatible game that is on here mm. so that it can be played without the Connect? Uh, no. The only ones that did, that did that were the, 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 were the Disney games. I think. I don't think. Uh, um, I I think Capcom Bopper to fix the Steel Battalion, the Steel Battalion game we did for the Xbox 360. Most Connect. of the, most of the Kinect games are basically useless now, Jova. Like you have to keep I your old 360 and Xbox and Kinects. Maybe oh, Dark Siders Three. I'm actually Maybe. playing these uh, these days. Well, actually, it's pretty leaving. good. It's gonna be, it's gonna be leaving the uh, games pass. So <laughs> sorry, I couldn't mute in time. Maybe they remade Sonic. Oh yeah, Games, games of Gold. Uh, yeah, remember, yeah, remember when Games of Gold was a uh, kind of in, uh, uh, yeah. This is another thing that I've also learned um, over the last year. Uh, ever since Game Pass became a thing, Microsoft never even bothers to put any decent games on Games of Gold. For those who don't know, Games of Gold is the is Microsoft's equivalent to the PlayStation Plus monthly games. Um, like uh, they never put anything good uh, in games and gold, but just so they can push Game Pass. All right, now let's see uh, what the actual shop has to offer. So, Dwibs, uh, what are yeah. all the things you can get with points that you get by clearing achievements or quests, as the Xbox Series X calls it? You can get uh, discounts on stuff. Uh, you can get uh, points. You can get your uh, points for your, your money for your account. Wow! So. Uh, so kudos to Microsoft for giving achievements more of a purpose. Now you can literally use them to get discounts on other games. So Tio, I wonder how long the, how long it will last. <laughs> I was about to say. So Tio, your pension for platinuming may but come hey, in uh, handy. Hey, 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 we can we can buy the classic Megan Fox film Rogue. Oh, supernatural. Sh- Jove, uh, sorry, Dwebs. We all know that uh, Megan Fox's most classic film is Jennifer's Body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. It's right up. It's right. It's right up there. <laughs> Is it a better experience for her when the Bayformers movies? Let me put it like this. Uh, uh, the, it, 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 let me put it like this. Uh, the tale. Megan Fox is evil, and she's a succubus. That's the basic premise. Um. Is her? I want. I wanted to say a question, but I will reserve it after the mics are okay. turned off. Okay. Dear, dear, dear. I'll just say this. And you know, but don't have the hardware through the Xbox. That is awesome. Okay, so too, you know the Jonah Hex movie that starred her as a prostitute? That treated her with more class than Jennifer's body did. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. You see how much the price for that is? 220 quid? That's because you're looking at it officially, Dweebs, like, you know. I'm pretty, yeah. I'm pretty sure copies, discounted copies on sites like Amazon will arrive in no time. Yeah. Well, you all hope so. <laughs> I will say this, though, despite the controversy surrounding Microsoft as a company for obvious reasons, the Xbox Series X and Series S does seem like a step in the right direction, hardware-wise. Hey, the battery pack's cheap enough. Yeah, speaking of which, Dweebs, tell me something that you only felt that cannot be shown in this video. How does the um, the controller feel? Is it Does it feel heavy? You know, is it smooth in your hands? Well, I'm holding the controller now. Um, there is a bit of weight to it, but uh, generally, it's uh, it it plays very well. You know, the buttons are very uh, um, responsive, and you know, it's, it's not like it's uncomfortable or anything either. However, one of my main issues is the noise it makes. I mean, if you guys can stay silent for a minute, have a listen to the uh, D-pad. Ah, yeah, I hear it. Can you imagine playing this at night and your parents are asleep? <laughs> I only hear the traditional yeah. clicking, but it happens with uh, 
you know, for example, the, joy the joystick levers or like the infamous Fox or Melee uh, but that's, that's you know, a, dash cancelling. It's not so much the clickiness, that's my problem. My, my, my problem, and I can tell you this because uh, the controller on the Series S and X is the exact same as an Xbox One, so I can tell you this. The, the problem with the D-pad is that it's definitely a big step up from the 360 D-pad, which was horrible and an abomination. But um, this one is fine. But it's still not ideal. Like it, like it doesn't leave. And although to be fair, the the Switch Pro Controller's D-pad is also kind of a step down from the from the Wii U's Pro uh, D-pad, if you ask me. Like, uh, so even Nintendo is starting to fail a bit with it with their D-pads a bit. Like, in, uh, so it's uh, it's uh, I don't know. Like, people, it's like the art of the D-pad is starting to lose itself. It seems debatable. So that was the uh, quick tour of the Xbox Series S. What are your thoughts, guys? <laughs> it looks like it'll be a good console. What I want to know is if Microsoft will have some good games to accentuate the positives of this console. Yeah. Or the, games. Yeah, you know what? That's the big problem. It's the Panasonic 3DO all over again. You have this you have this really supposedly super powerful console. But there's nothing uh, to play on it that really showcases what it can do. It's the same thing with the Xbox One X. So let me remind you that the Xbox One X came out in 2017. And now we have this new one to replace it. And we never knew. We never even knew what exactly the One X could, was capable of doing. Oh, God. You just reminded me, Pedro. I really hope that Sony and Microsoft don't do the controversial mistake of doing basically a mid-console new console like the ps4 pro and xbox one x while were significant upgrades to the point where they could have potentially have been their own consoles and they kind of were to the point where some games were recommended to only play on the higher up ones i do hope that here the consoles can sustain themselves like oh don't get me wrong i get stuff like the upgrades like better batteries you know better processing slightly a bit but I hope that we don't get it to a point where we might as well call the next things the PS5.5 or the... We're okay, still going to get a PS5 Pro drop. It's pretty, it's pretty obvious. Sony has run with the concept, uh, at least for two generations now. We're not going to skip this one either. All I'm right. okay with that idea of calling it that. I just hope that, you know, it's eh, it's better held under control here. It was, but... clear, it was really clear that the PS4 and Xbox One were made, but not with the intent of sustaining their entire generation. My, my main issue, Jova, is that, remember, the, the One X cost $500 when it came out in 2017. So fans yeah. bought, paid 500 bucks for a console that never had any kind of first-party support to really showcase its power. And three years later, here comes another $500 console. Yeah, well, um, five hundred or four hundred, <laughs> based off of which version you get. But but yeah, I you, you, it, it, but that's the thing, though, Jova. They, they were hardware wise, they were they're literally pulling a Sega. Oh, here's a Sega CD. Oh, and now here's the thirty two X. And right, and the very next year after the thirty two X, here's a Sega Saturn. And we're gonna drop the thirty two X now. Like it's it, it it really is a case of just like look, p put out a piece of hardware and support it for a, a few years before coming up with a new one. Like, this, Go ahead. this again goes back to my point of the mid console upgrade thing. Like, like I said, the Series X, I was mean, sorry, the Xbox One X. God, I hate these names. Yes, the Xbox One X could have been its own console, different from the Xbox One. You know, with how much of an upgrade and how expensive it was to get it as well. So I'm just hoping that the Series X does a better job and. Let's just say the Xbox One family in general, because Jesus Christ, Microsoft, get better with these names. That said, though, to the positives, I will say it's a pretty damn cool idea that achievements now can be used for points that you can use to buy stuff. Like, it seems like such an obvious thing to do, but from what I recall, it's not really been done before, at least not on a mainstream console like this, so... Kudos to them on that. The interface looks like it works, and it seems like they actually know what they're doing from the get-go here, unlike with the Xbox One. So kudos. Again, the only issue is that the launch window for this thing is not looking the best in terms of, well, why you should buy the thing. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, good showcase. Next. I'll do it. I'll go next, just to be quick. It's fine serviceable um a bit you know empty in presentation like you you hope that uh, um this is something that uh, also it's 
apparently it's a thing on other um, stores menu. The fact that uh, unless you have a specific, specific theme equipped to your console, it doesn't really have uh, anything particular in the background. It's just this silent monochrome stuff, which I get it. Uh, minimal, it there is a you know minimalistic fashion to it, uh, but I hope that uh, for the future um, Microsoft implements. Uh, uh, you know, actual themes similar to what PlayStation did uh, from pre onward. Um, otherwise, it really looks serviceable. I'm still on, on, you know, I still mentioned previously how the fact that uh, the the controller for for Xbox consoles is something that I don't appreciate just for the lack of symmetry. It's something that I really can't get over it. <laughs> but otherwise, if it's you know improved enough for previous models, you know, lighter. You know, easier to handle and stuff like that. Uh, fair enough. I tell you a so, question. I'm actually curious. Did you ever try out the the Wii U Pro controller? Yes, actually. Like I did. So do you like the two analog sticks being on top of the controller? They're symmetrical, no. at least. <laughs> no. Uh, I, guess, I guess in that case, it's well, it's it's better that way. It's just a matter of you know the fact that my thumbs have to reach up instead. Um, but uh, but no. But otherwise, it's. Fine, we'll see what happens in the future. Next. Yeah, um, my thoughts overall, um, I mean, aside from the rather clunky way to get to menus, um, overall, I think the system itself is fine. You know, games load fast, the apps run at a good speed, and when I'm watching stuff like Disney Plus or Funimation now, the videos are generally of a very good quality. Well, I guess it helps just because my Xbox is right near my router, so maybe maybe that has something to do with it. But overall, it's the system itself is fine, and I don't have any smoke coming out of it either. So uh, plus, uh, Shira, have you gave them your thoughts? No, I mean it seems fine, and from what you said, it works well. So, what more can you ask for other than games? Games. You know, uh, at this point, where are the video yeah, games? Way, where are the video games? This. We got the console. Where are the games? All right, I'll, I'll put it this way: I got this. This is this is basically my birthday slash Christmas present off one of my relatives. So um, at least body wise, I won't have that bigger thing against the system. Uh, another thing, by the another thing, by the way, everybody, uh, look forward to a potential uh, co-op. Playthrough of my, me and Dwebs for the Gears Five deal, upcoming DLC when we eventually do that playthrough. So, oh, is there a crossplay between Xbox One? There and is, yes. The, well, the remember, 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 well, there is, Joe. But uh, Microsoft is all about the crossplay, even if it uh, sometimes it doesn't really make any sense. But uh, well, kudos to them on that. It's better than being completely crossed off from all of them. Well, that's true, Joe. But uh, you should still give people the option not to do crossplay with PC users that can use trainers to cheat. So Yeah, 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 true, I get that. That's uh, it's, it's at least an example that Sony can hopefully follow. Well the, well they did well actually Sony did start doing the crossplay thing recently actually. So you can Yes, yes, yes. Hence why I say that they should keep on following it though, cause mm, Sony a bit well you know, whatever, we're getting off topic. Yeah, uh, so anyway, that was the uh, Xbox Series S preview. Uh, join us in the future when we inevitably play some games through the system. Hopefully one's uh, worth it. So we'll see you then. See ya. See ya. See ya.